Today we're going to be installing a Minn Kota Riptide Taroba. It's got iPilots, 24 volts, and it's got 80 pounds thrust. We're going to be installing that on our brand new Mako skiff we just got. If this is your first time to the channel, we do a lot of boat how-tos. I'm a boat mechanic, I'm Mercury certified, and I'm also Minn Kota certified. And uh, we do a lot of how-tos, installs, and service, and all kinds of different stuff on this channel as well as fishing. I moved out to Florida this year, so I'm fishing out off the treasure coast of Florida for the most part, but I'm fishing all over the east coast of Florida. So uh, if you like the channel, please subscribe. Really appreciate it. Also, all this stuff that I can, I will link on uh, Amazon. So that also helps the channel out and uh, helps me keep making more of these videos. So uh, stay tuned, I'll go over how we install everything. All right, so first off with the install, you're gonna need two deep cycle batteries. You wanna run deep cycle batteries on your trolling motor. You don't wanna use cranking batteries. And if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm not a big fan on dual purpose batteries. I just don't like things that do two different things. They're not gonna do either one well. So trolling motor, you want two deep cycle batteries. These are group 27s. I would say that's pretty standard with a trolling motor install is a group 27 battery. Now space is always the determining factor for batteries. So if you can only run two group 24s, there's some boats that can only fit that. So run those. If you can run two group 31s, run those. Just weight is gonna be a factor going to a, a group 31. They're gonna weigh a little bit more. These are flooded lead acid batteries standard batteries across the industry. AGMs would be uh, your next step up. And then now they have gel batteries and they have lithium batteries. We'll eventually do a video on lithium batteries, but that's a totally separate video. So flooded lead acid batteries are gonna be great. These are Bass Pro brand, but if you're not aware, Bass Pro just pays somebody else to make their stuff and puts their label on it. And there's only, as far as I know, a handful of battery manufacturers in the country. So I believe, from what I've told, these are made by Interstate. So and they actually carry a better warranty than Interstate. That's the reason why I, I went with these. They have a one year free replacement and then they have a three year pro rated. AGMs would be better in my scenario because I'm gonna be mounting them up in the bow. They're gonna be shaking around a lot which over time breaks down the plates and the batteries. And then that in turn causes your batteries to not hold a charge as long and starts to break down. So AGMs would be better. However, AGMs are very expensive. They're also quite a bit heavier than flooded lead acid batteries, believe it or not. So I'm just sticking with flooded batteries. And then to go along with that, we have the battery charger. So this is almost a must with trolling motor batteries. If you wanna take the time and charge each one individually, that's on you, but I don't know why you would not install an onboard battery charger. These things are waterproof. They stay mounted on your boat. You just plug in your extension cord to them. You can even put in a receptacle so you don't even have to open a compartment to, uh, to plug them in. They maintain your batteries and keep them fully charged and healthy. So uh, you can leave them in, plugged in for an extended period of time. I mean, if you're not using your boat for months, you better have one of these on here or your batteries are, might be shot when you go to use them again. So this will extend the life of your batteries and keep your sanity because you're not gonna be fighting battery issues. Um, I'm gonna be installing a battery switch also because I'm not making my trolling motor removable. I'm gonna directly wire it. So I'm not gonna have a plug to unplug. Um, this will shut it off. We're gonna go over how to install the, the whole system and wire up 24 volt battery system. So 
let's uh let's get into this all right let's unbox this bad boy so my favorite way to do it easiest way is just to take your knife now this completely destroys the box so That is by far the easiest way to get it out of the box. Remove the styrofoam. I got the model with the heading sensor. You can get these now without a heading sensor. They were having a problem getting these out. The supplier that makes these for Minn Kota was having a supply chain issue and uh, Minn Kota was really, really backlogged. So they started sending out trolling motors without the heading sensor. Um, they're starting to do that now, but I was told that if you did get one without that, there's a uh, tag that you should have got in your box and you can submit it and they'll send you one. Prop. The remote control. Zip tied here. And this is where you want to pay real close attention to make sure nothing's damaged. No cracks or chips. Busted styrofoam would be a dead giveaway. You got a, a problem or a, uh, a crushed box. If the box is crushed in the corner, you really wanna be checking that out. If you ordered it online and it comes that way, contact them immediately, take a picture. If there's a problem, I would say contact them immediately, but you wanna get pictures of it uh, before you move it so you can prove that's how it was delivered. So we're gonna take these side plates off and uh, then we're gonna start mocking it up on the boat. Put your hands over where the, the bolts are there because right, they're gonna fall out. Kind of slide this back down the coil a little bit. Take the other side off. Same thing. And then just put all four of your bolts in here. Now you want to use some masking tape and you're going to mask off the area where you plan on mounting your trolling motor. It's going to let you slide it around without scratching. It's going to let you mark it, you know, and if you don't like it, move it. It'll also help when we go to drill the holes in the fiberglass. So a couple of things you have to watch out when you're uh, mocking this up. One of them being, you need some clearance here past your rub rail. So you want to make sure that this cutout right here is at least a couple of fingers you'd like past your rub rail or the edge of your boat. If your boat has a taper to it, you may have to come up with some sort of a, a mounting bracket, some sort of custom mount for your trolling motor. Um, I found a, actually they're local here to this area. It's called Shuttle Slide. They, they make a mount that you can mount your trolling motor to and it actually slides back. One, so you don't hit the trailer when you come off and two, for you to have that extra clearance for your trolling motor to clear the edge of your boat. Check them out. I found them a while back. Everybody that we've installed that on their boat has absolutely loved it. They're called Shuttle Slide. I'll try to link the, uh, their link in the description below. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Also, the other thing you want to make sure is your trolling motor doesn't block any compartment that you want to open while your trolling motor is stowed. So I don't want to have to deploy this trolling motor anytime I open this compartment. So I want to get in here and make sure I got clearance. And there you go. So we have clearance. I can even bring this back in just a little bit. I try to avoid having it hanging over the edge of the boat 
because also when you're docking or you're tied off, you don't want any kind of a rough wave coming and this getting caught on the dock. So I try to keep it within the shadow of the boat if I can. Sometimes on the bow, you can, on a, on a V-hole style boat, you can mount them just slightly off because again, that's not the widest point of your boat. The bow is tapering in and so the side of your boat actually sticks out further. So you're gonna dock up against that side um, and your trolling motor would be in the clear still at that point. All right, so now we kind of got it mocked out where we want it. We check the clearance on the on the door. We check that it doesn't overhang the boat too much uh, for docking. And we've checked that we have the proper clearance right here so that it will deploy and it won't hit the uh, the boat. Also, if you happen to run into anything, the, the shaft will flex. So you want to give it a little bit of room there. So next you're gonna now mark it out. Now I love using these. Again, you can pick these up on uh, Amazon. I'll link them in the, uh, in the description below. Every little bit helps the channel. And again, it doesn't cost you any extra money. It just helps the channel out a little bit. These are a long reach pin, nice and narrow tip for you to uh, mark through holes. I use these pretty much all the time. Uh, Pika, and then there's another brand uh, Dixon makes, it's called the Reach. Same thing though. So what you wanna do now, just in case you, you bump it, you wanna go ahead and make yourself a mark along the edge, both edges right here, just kinda square that off, just in case you happen to bump it just slightly, you know, you can quickly go back where you had it, like that. I do them on both sides, just because, like that. And then now we want to uh, we want to mark our hole so that it's actually in the chassis that we're gonna through bolt. On this one here, I slid a little far forward because where we're at right here, we're in this overhang on this skiff. Every boat's gonna be different, but it'll, this one I'll have to get from the outside. The others I will get from the inside. But this will be hidden up underneath this channel on this particular boat that's how it has to go you do want to make sure you get at least four holes there's six total but you want to hit at least four of them one of them sometimes you can use a, a lag screw if you don't have any access you can do three through bolts and one nice beefy lag screw right here of course all stainless hardware they provide you with quarter 20 bolts, but sometimes you may need uh, a shorter bolt or a longer bolt. So you may have to go to the hardware store and pick those up. So now we're gonna mark our holes. On there. This one's a little bit tricky. That's why it's nice to have this pin on that side. Then we'll mark the two on the other side. Now we'll pull the trolling motor off and set it down out of the way. Now we got our hole. All right, so safety glasses. I'm actually standing in the wind uh, for this shot. So definitely wanna have the glasses on because the wind's gonna probably try to blow the fiberglass right in my eye. Uh, quarter uh, drill bit. We're going backwards just a little bit. Go forward. Now you want to countersink your uh, your holes here. Now we're gonna remove the uh, the panel here, and access the uh, through bolts and the wiring. They've already added these jumpers 
for the pre-wiring. Now you can take these off and connect it to a plug if you'd like to mount a plug here, right here instead. But uh, I'm gonna be connecting directly to the we can uh, pull off all of our masking tape. I like to keep the masking tape business booming. Them and zip ties, I alone keep in business. Now we're going to uh, put just a dab of silicone around each one of these holes just to keep any water from trying to get in there. All right, so then you're gonna grab your, your hardware pack that comes with your trolling motor, and inside you'll find these rubber washer bushings. These little rubber bushings here. Now these serve a couple purposes. They, uh, they'll help with vibration uh, when your trolling motor is at certain speeds, you'll get like this harmonic vibration that will help not rattle your whole boat. And then also any uneven surface, you can, you know, smash these down and level your trolling motor out. Um, that's uh, really important on like the, Al the Altera where it stows itself. You, you want the, you don't want to try to twist the chassis of the, of the trolling motor. Now we're gonna put our trolling motor back up here and try not to bump these things out of the way. Use a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. The stainless on stainless will gall up and uh, create a lot of heat. It'll actually weld the nut before it gets tight, which can still happen even with the uh, anti it just gives you a little bit better odds. Put it on those first quarter of threads there. And then now that you've touched it, it's gonna get all over you. It's inevitable, right? <laughs> now it'll be on my face here in a minute. So, let's see if we can get this in without removing that plug. Okay, in there. If you don't, you may get lucky, but you might regret it. Now I think I'm gonna have to use a shorter bolt. Not too bad. Nah, that'll work. It's never complete until you it's not going anywhere. Now let's do it. Now we're gonna put the uh, the side plates on. Prop on nine sixteenths. And before you take this off, you want to make sure these two little pop outs here, whatever you want to call these, are level. And you're going to toss the red washer away keep the stainless one. The reason why you wanted that level like that is when you take that off, that can fall out. So that's why I say to take it out like that, because that thing falls out <laughs> just that easy. Gone, especially if you're working in gravel or grass or something. And that pin, goes right in there, which is also in line with the blades. So that's a good reference of putting it on. 
it on like that, slides right onto that pin. There you go. Now we're gonna wire it to the, uh, to the jumpers here. So you're just gonna get the uh, appropriate size ring terminal and uh, cut this down. And uh, we're gonna feed it through this little clamshell fitting right here. Of course, the red is positive and the black is negative. So we're gonna take this off. Didn't quite have the right size ring terminal, so I made my own custom. So, like that. And we're gonna take this guy off. I do want the clamshell to still face down, even though it would probably look better with it up, but reason being is you don't want water trying to go that way. use a heat gun this is a snap-on little torch butane torch so that guy's in one there put that one on and that one on like that put your nut Positive one is done. And negative. Put them on there just like that. I am going to get some uh, split loom and run along here. I have to run up to the hardware store in a little while to get some stuff or some other installs I'm doing. So I will get some split loom and this will be split loom. Just to keep the sun from fading that wire, damaging it. And then, uh, if you don't know about these already, this is your uh, lift assist spring. It's in here. So, it also fits in right here on this back side. You can see there's a little spring loaded deal right here that fits in to the steering collar. This is your steering collar. So this is what actually turns your motor. So when that locks in, so sometimes when you deploy it, it won't be into this notch. It'll take a, you know, rotation or so until it finds that and drops down in there. And then you're locked in, you're steering. And then this is your depth collar here. Like that, see? That's what locks that in to that. 
So the depth collar. You don't ever want to have it all the way fully deployed where it's actually using this nut and uh, bolt right here for your depth collar. Uh, it will, I've seen them tear through and tear right through the top of the shaft right here because it's resting on that and not on this. Also, when you uh, stow it, I'm gonna flip that down, stow it. And if you're gonna go run, running across the water a uh, long distance or whether you're putting it back on the trailer, you wanna slide this depth collar all the way up against here. Driving down the road or on rough water, the vibration can sometimes, if this isn't all the way there, let's say it's there, this can go and you can actually hop off of here and this thing can deploy while you're on the water or on your trailer towing and then it's game over for your, your whole chassis, steering motor and shaft and mo your motor's pretty much shot. And if, and if it's on the water, it's gonna hit your boat too. So make sure you put that collar there. There's a sticker right there telling you to do it. And nobody reads it. All right, now we're gonna get into the, uh, the battery wiring. So what I'm doing right now is I'm pulling, uh, these are gonna be mounted up here now to give us room to mount these kind of all the way back. Uh, so we gotta remove these mount clips and uh, they use some extremely long hardware that I'm not gonna reuse. That's ridiculous and you wouldn't want to use that I might go through the front of the boat with that long a screw obviously here you got the room so I wouldn't reuse this if you're doing it on this boat and you're doing following along with what I'm doing use a shorter screw that's not needed um, some of these holes will be hidden with the uh, battery charger battery charger is going to be mounted here I may clean up some of this caulking and stuff but eventually I'm putting speakers in here as well so I'm gonna have wires running along there so I may just utilize that hole So now we're gonna figure out where we're mounting this guy. All right. We pulled all these wires for tomorrow's install, which is gonna be speakers and LED lights. So check that out if you're interested. So I think we're gonna mount it about here, there, and there. So the battery switch is probably gonna have to mount right here next to the battery charger. Blue C on off battery switch. It's rated up to 48 volts, which only 24 here. And then it's rated up to uh, 300 amps continuous. End up mounting that. Again, somewhere like that. Hide those two holes and then battery switch probably be mounted about like that. Hide that hole. That one over there we'll use for uh, a wire loom. There we go, no more holes. All right, let's make it happen. I like it. Close. It'll get you close. Nothing's really level on a boat. We're not too far off there. People are like, well, how do you know the floor's level? How do you know it's level on the trailer? Me don't. It's just a thing to get you close. Sometimes the level looks wrong on a boat. I'll tell you that. 
They come with hardware. Our Phillips tip and countersink those. Always. I'm gonna put a dab of silicone in all those holes. This is going to be our positive side. I'll put some silicone on those holes as well. So on the switch you have a, it's labeled output and input. Input comes from the battery and output goes to the trolling motor. I don't know if you can see that. It's labeled right there. So this is going to the trolling motor. So that goes on the output side. And then this is going to go to our battery. And it has our resettable breaker on it. 60 amp resettable breaker. And that's going to go on the input side. It's coming in from the battery. Out to the trolling motor or in from source and out to load. There we go. So I do adjust those. I don't want them both coming out the bottom, but you could pop off the any one of these knockoff pop outs and uh, run your wire in there. And these are three inch to go all the way through this. If you're mounting the box like this, you can mount this many different ways but if you're mounting it like i am these are three inch screws number tens all right now for the batteries i'm gonna just make sure i'm gonna have to close this lid and just make sure where i put this it doesn't have any problem i think that's just the struts themselves from being up so long. This is the strap that all battery boxes come with, pretty much. And for one, there's a plastic, and two, that buckle right there. I hate the man that designed that. And that thing is a pain in the butt. So I don't recommend using these. Spend the extra money and get this battery tie down kit with this style strap and those buckles, tie down buckles there because you'll thank me later. If not, I told you so. All right, now let's drill our holes. Be very careful, just go through that. Don't try to keep going, you'll find the bottom. Vacuum this out and silicone those and then we'll put the straps on. All right, the straps are in now. And so we'll drop our boxes in there and our batteries. Just like that. Just like that. Now this is two gauge wire, it's all I had, so I just used it. But all you really need is eight gauge, but I would recommend four or six. So we got our two batteries. This one is gonna have the main positive coming off of it, and that one will have the main negative. And then we're gonna go positive on that side to negative on this side. So main positive, main negative, and then it's going to go positive negative between the two batteries and that gives you 24 volts. So we're going to put our positive on first. That also has to have the breaker on it right here. So we're going to put that on first. 
have to try to secure this where it doesn't want to touch that negative. And then we're going to need to connect our battery. Put our battery charger lead on it. And then we're going to put our battery nut. In there. Then we're going to put our negative side of our jumper over here. Side. So each battery gets a bank from the battery charger. If you got two batteries, you want a two bank charger. Even though they're hooked, the batteries are hooked together in either parallel or series like this, they're hooked in series. You want a bank per battery. Question I get asked quite a bit. So on this side, now we're gonna hook up our main negative over here. Take our other battery bank. Take our jumper. Now that's hooked up. Now it'll just be a matter of putting everything on and uh, kind of making the wires look a little cleaner. If you're mounting this somewhere where there's not a lot of, you know, access, you don't even have to worry about battery box I actually don't care for battery boxes when I can avoid them but because I'm gonna be having so much storage stuff in here I, I want the battery box because it keeps them covered so I can stack anything I want on here without having to worry about terminals getting connected now we can use our strap Stick the rest of it back under there like that. Just gotta try to make sure all these cables come in the, those cutouts there. So now we're just gonna clean up all this wiring, some zip ties. I may eventually run a uh, plug up to the valve, a receptacle plug, tie this in to it so I don't even have to leave this hatch open. I can just plug right in up there where our, the trolling motor's wired. But for now, we're gonna leave it like this. All right, well, it's the next day. I went and got some of that split loom I was talking about, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on now and we'll finish up this install by installing the heading sensor. All right, so now we're gonna install the heading sensor. This is basically nothing more than an electronic compass. It talks to the trolling motor to let the trolling motor know which direction the boat's facing uh, when you do um, spot lock or spot jog. So you want the arrow, which is right here, to be pointed forward, of course, and then also the arrow needs to be parallel with the keel of the boat, with the center line of the boat. So it needs to be wired to 12 volts, so you don't want to hook it up to your trolling motor batteries, especially not in series. Um, but also it needs to be hooked to a separate 12 volt battery, like your cranking battery or a house battery, not your trolling motor batteries. Um, it does work. I've seen guys have it installed, hooked up to your trolling motor battery, but the instructions tell you not to do that. Um, why I'm not an electrical engineer, other than I know when the trolling motor is running, it can cause uh, electrical interference to anything connected to it. So like if your fish finder is hooked to your trolling motor battery, and when you run your trolling motor, you're getting weird readings or lines, it's because it's picking up the electro motor in the, in the trolling motor and causing an interference. So we're gonna hook this up to our crank battery. We're gonna put it right here on the dash and uh, to get it out of the way of the fish finder, I'm gonna put it all the way up in the corner. I'm gonna remove the windshield. Just gonna mark it out 
what we want. To make one mark there. Now I'm gonna have to remove the windshield to get the other one and put it in place. And then because the wire needs to come right down through the middle, somewhere right in between here, we're gonna make another hole for the wire to come through. Do a quarter inch drill bit for the wire. Since I'm going just inside here for the power, I don't need that much wire, so I just trimmed it. That'll be plenty. Make it a little bit more manageable. I'll strip it back now. While it's outside, be easier. Then we put the screws in. And you do want to put a, a fuse holder in there in line with the power. It only calls for one amp fuse. Check it. That was loose. There we go. So in here, this is a, a bus bar for your ground and your positive. These, this side is a saddle and all of these are hot saddle all these are ground so we're going to attach it to here got power the light will come on so now we just got a parrot it's Bluetooth so you're just gonna hold down this right here and it'll be flashing and then you have to go over to the head on the trolley motor and there's a button that says pair and hit pair hold it down that beep right there lets you know it's paired so now we paired it. You'll never have to pair that again. That's a, a one-time deal right there. All right, so to turn it on, you're gonna hold the check mark down. You're gonna agree to their navigational things. And then to go into that sensor calibration for the heading sensor, you're gonna scroll here and you're gonna go into system and you're gonna hit this soft key over here. And then you're gonna scroll down here to sensor calibration. And then you're gonna hit the check mark and then cannot start motor not deployed. So anyways, that's where you would go to do your sensor calibration. That's how you find it. So I'll do that out on the water. Okay, so we're gonna scroll through our uh, menu right here with these buttons to get the system. And then you're gonna hit system and you're gonna scroll down until you see sensor calibration. And then you're gonna hit the check mark and then you're gonna press start. Okay, it says drive boat in two complete circles. So we're gonna drive the boat in two complete circles now. There's a pie graph here telling me how much of a circle we've done. We're halfway there. Three quarters of the way there. That's one circle. So quarter, half, three quarters, almost there. Okay, calibration was successful. And then we're just gonna, just gonna de deploy this and make sure that the everything is working on the trolling motor like it should, the prop and the turning and everything else. So I'm gonna deploy the trolling motor. So you wanna go left, that's the left. Right. Then you wanna turn the prop on and go through all the speeds, prop off. You'll see no prop in that window. Prop on, you'll see the prop in there and spinning. 
it'll resume at whatever speed you stopped it at. So if I'm on 7 and I turn it off, when I start it again, I'm still on 7. And that's it. It's ready to go. Get out on the water and start catching fish. So uh, make sure you do that. And um, if you guys have any questions about any of the install or anything like that, go ahead and leave me a comment below. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks. So we mount it up. Well, we, we're gonna mock it up. You need some clearance here past your love rub. You need some clearance here past your rub rail. Everybody that we've installed their, them on. <laughs> All right, so safety glasses, safety sometime. Oh, see, I can't even hardly see through those. And she don't go nowhere. I was leaning on the boat so the camera's on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a true test. I, mean, I don't play around when I test things. See how I got entities on me. I don't know what I touched with entities. Probably this. Actually, exactly where I got it. It wasn't too bad. No, not, no. I've had much worse. I've had one more place to contemplate the meaning of life. Why are we here? I'm getting way ahead of myself. Take two. Well, you're the Mahi Man. You got the two stickers and the license plate. Oh, uh, yeah. Mahi Man? That'd be my rapper name. Mahi Man. Mahi Man. <laughs> you gotta be a little, though. Little Mahi Man. <laughs> Little, little Mahi Man.